So the Dow ended the session lower, whipsawed all day long. Initially, it slipped on news at the... Well, actually, it was doing really well. It was up like 250 points. We had, suffered, we had come off the bottom a couple of times, but then came the news that two-year budget deal would significantly increase uh, fiscal spending and, by the way, remove uh, sequestration. So uh, we're talking about D.C. spending like they love to spend. It also coincided that move with the spike in a 10-year Treasury yield uh, as investors continue to see rates go higher at a really rapid clip. Here now to discuss the impact of this bill on the economy and the stock market, and of course on your wallets and pocketbooks, Liz Peak, the FiscalTimes.com columnist, and David Bonson, the Bonson Group founder and CIO, also the author of the new book, Crisis of Responsibility. I'm going to give it to the fresh author here, David. It feels like there's going to be a major crisis of responsibility because we know Washington, D.C., both sides of the aisle, the establishment love to spend. They've taken, they're trying to take the, the shackles that were sort of uh, foisted on them uh, off now to, to get back to the normal ways. Does that concern you? Oh, it certainly does. It concerns me on a number of levels. I mean, the biggest thing that concerns me is that there's so little that they can cut without the society going crazy. That's the biggest problem, is it isn't like the people are begging for anything to be cut. Uh, the entitlements are the real elephant in the room. Nobody wants to touch it. That's really the lowest hanging fruit to make a difference. They could nibble around the edges in programs, but they end up kind of doing what they do, finding an excuse to go spend. It pushes right. rates higher. It's a big problem. But, Liz, we're not talking about them even nibbling around the edges. We're talking about them making the edges bigger now, right? I mean, yeah. just saying, hey, go forward. Uh, you know, and again, I'm a champion of more military spending. We have a depleted military. You know that as well as anyone else, and we should focus on it. And I do think President Trump's right in the sense that the Democrats are holding the military hostage, and now they're holding the futures of our children and grandchildren hostage by saying, hey, we want this sort of tit-for-tat spending increase. Yeah, and, and unfortunately, there just wasn't a deal here. I mean, it was basically everyone sort of laid down across the road and said, I give up. Uh, so, yes, we're going to have an increase in military spending. We're also going to have an increase in almost every other branch of government. Uh, and what, what worries me, I think, uh, first of all, for Republicans, it looks terrible. The Republicans are supposed to be the party that has some fiscal prudence, and that's not showing up. Uh, in terms of the stock market and, and sort of where we are in terms of the cycle right now, you know, this is another just huge stimulus. And there was already concern about the, how the tax cuts were excess stimulus at a time when we're operating with 4.1 percent unemployment and stuff. The, the canary in the coal mine here is certainly uh, Treasury rates. And when the market went crazy the other day, it was because Treasuries began to... Uh, Tenure began to right. get close to three percent. We're certainly going to see that again. It's going to have a bad impact. Also, on the market. we know rates are eventually going to go up anyway, right? Sure. I mean, the Fed was at zero for a long time. Uh, it just stands to reason we'll revert to the mean somewhere, and it's going to be higher than where we are now, David. And that brings to, to mind how much money we'll spend annually servicing the debt. I mean, we're talking perhaps a trillion dollars a year to service the debt, not to pay it down, just to service it. That's a lot of school books. Right. I mean, that's yeah, right. that's a lot of military hardware. That's a lot of things that can improve the lives of a lot of Americans. That's right. And it's something they haven't had to deal with in this explosion of debt in the Obama years. Rates were held so low. And for whatever reason, they refused to lock rates higher. Their balance sheet was so unbelievably short term maturities. So they never took advantage of the low rates. So that debt service was actually a very low percentage of annual outlays. That's going to have to change. And I think that ultimately it argues for a flattening yield curve and just a sort of compression of economic growth. It's but not a good thing. It begins to push out other spending. That's a really the scary Certainly. thing. I mean, if you start factoring in higher interest rates, this servicing the debt becomes one of the biggest budget items. That's a, that is a frightening prospect. And you're saying there's no chance anywhere outside these uh, entitlements or, you know, the, to, to, to even make a dent. No, there is, there is something, but here's the math of it. It's $2 trillion a year in transfer payments. We're talking about $300 billion here today. You're talking housing, I'm, welfare, food I'm talking about Social stamps, Security, Social, Medicare, Okay, healthcare. you're talking about the, the, the main three. Okay. That's right, the, the kind of major entitlements. Sure. They represent 60% of the annual outlays. So there are things they could do, but see, I'm with you. I think that they need the greater military spending. There's things they need to do to optimize. They could be more efficient with sure. it. But the problem is there's no political will to cut in the other programs, and the entitlement issue right. is going to have it's, to be... It's always been a political third rail, and it That's remains right. that way. Thank you both very much. Congratulations on the book.